God we're not going live, I'd be so nervous. I think there's a bat in here. Well, hello, Barneys, Barneys and Bettys, barn burners. Tonight's program is a momentous occasion because it marks the beginning of Red Barn Radio's third decade of producing this weekly broadcast of uniquely American music. <laughs> uniquely American music rooted in the southern United States. Red Barn Radio is and always has been staged in Lexington, a city in the heart of Kentucky, a state with its own rich musical history. Red Barn Radio has produced nearly 750 programs since we started in 2002. Great music, yes. Talent, yes, but so much more. We urge our guests to make the joyful music noise to their heart's content, but we also give them time to tell us about themselves, not just about their latest CD, who they've opened for and where they're playing next, but instead about where the music comes from, how place and family factors into the sounds they've chosen, about how they've written and played themselves through the best and worst of times. This is Red Barn Radio and how we do what we do. Tonight, on this beginning night of our 20th season, we tip our hats to first Red Barn Radio founder and producer, Mr. Ed Commons. Ed's vision and collaborative spirit has allowed this program to grow and flourish through changing times. He's a great leader, a great educator, a terrific mentor. We also nod to our great staff, Mr. Matt Flores, who co-produces the show, who is master of all things sound. John Burke, recently promoted to floor manager with the departure of longtime friend Adam Schrodinger. We nod to Kate Heinen, who assists with all manner of Red Barn matters, from social media to video production. And finally, Eric Daher, who is instrumental in helping us leap confidently over the technical hurdles, which are just a part of this game. Now, before we introduce some very special performers, we have an honorable guest this evening to help us launch this 20th broadcast season. Folks, welcome Amy Sweetall, President and CEO of LexArts. Hey, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I so appreciate you inviting me to be here. Uh, we are just so honored and uh, excited about the Red Barn Radio 20th season. What a huge milestone for our city, our arts sector, our country, and our world to have this treasure right here in Lexington, Kentucky. LexArts uh, has been around now almost 50 years, so we as well are celebrating a really huge milestone and celebration. Uh, so enjoy. I love this season. I love to be here. I hope that uh, everyone is, will enjoy this as much as I do every week, see, be getting able to see Red Barn Radio. Thank Thanks you. so much, Amy. <laughs> Amy Sweetall. I, too, am thrilled to be part of the milestone tonight's program represents. Uh, I'm Brad Becker. I've hosted and co-produced Red Barn Radio for 18 years or 600 and some weekly shows. Um, tonight, we welcome you to show number 746, John. And our first guest for season 20, and another reason to celebrate, is Johnson City, Tennessee-based band Bill and the Bells. Welcome Bill and the Bells to the Red Barn stage. Woo! 
Thank you. We're happy to be here. We'll start with one called the old lonesome or the old weary blues. Yeah, yeah. One, And welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. Our guests for this first show of season 20 are some musicians we have really been looking forward to meeting for months. This East Tennessee based group plays a wonderful mix of old time bluegrass and swing, primarily focused on the sounds of American music in the period prior to World War II. 
Chris Trulson, the Bill of the Bells, was raised in the mountains of Colorado and rambled from state to state before finding his home in the South, where he studied music at ETSU, East Tennessee State. He hosts the newly revived Farm and Fun Time program, a terrific hearkening back to the days of classic live radio featuring today's top traditional country, bluegrass, and old-time artists. Staged in Bristol, Virginia, the birthplace of country music, Farm and Fun Time is viewed by millions throughout the South. Chris is joined by two outstanding players. Kalia Yeagle grew up in Alaska. She plays fiddle. After high school, she moved to Poughkeepsie, New York to attend Vassar College and then to Johnson City, Tennessee to attend East Tennessee State University where she immersed herself in old time music and now teaches old time music. Singer and multi-instrumentalist Aiden Van Sudendale, banjo, vocal, and ukulele. She grew up in a musical family in South Florida, was an English major at Denison University in Granville, Ohio, and later moved to Nashville, where she lives today. Aiden is the newest member of Bill and the Bells and brings her many talents to this terrific trio of players. Get ready for a show to remember, folks. We got Bill and the Bells on the Red Barn stage. All right. Nice job, Brad. You got all of our names. That was a huge feat. Congratulations to that, and congratulations on 20 years. We're so happy to be here and uh, playing some music for y'all. We'll get you a fiddle tune here. This is, uh, as, as mentioned, we, we live in Johnson City, and this song is called The Johnson City Rag. <laughs> Johnson City Rag. Thank y'all. We appreciate it. We're so happy to be here. And uh, we'll play you a song to prove it. This is a happy song. It's called uh, Walking in the Sunshine. This is actually an old Roger Miller tune, and it goes like this. <clears throat> Sunshine, sing a little sunshine. 
that snowy pasture green and grassy field there it is well we've got we've got a new record that we put out uh, just a little while ago just about in June a record that we'd recorded quite a, a, a ways back and decided not to put it out for some time with the pandemic and stuff and not touring and all that uh, not fun business um, but we did just put it out. We're really proud of the record. We're going to play a bunch of tunes from that record this evening. Uh, and a lot of the songs sound happy. The record's called Happy Again. Um, but listen closely and you may hear some juxtaposition. Uh, this one here, this, this, this title track is a little bit more obvious about it. It's called uh, I'll Never Be Happy Again. And it goes like this. <laughs> I'll never be happy again. Happy to see some folks in here today. We had uh, a couple friends come and visit us from a little ways away that we haven't seen in some time, so happy to see them here too. 
And hey to everybody who's tuning in wherever you might be, probably all over the world, we imagine. Uh, we've got uh, Aiden here, just swap banjos, got a little banjo here, and we're going to play you a tune uh, on the new record that's called Taking Back My Yesterday. This is a, a tune that we wrote that's kind of a, it's kind of a hit the road jack kind of tune, and uh, it kind of sounds like Ray Charles meets Bob Wills, at least we hope. We try to channel that, so we'll play it for you here. It goes like this. We are thrilled to have with us this evening Bill and the Bells. They have uh, received accolades from Rolling Stone and IBMA. They've toured extensively in and out of the U.S. They teach and they make some damn good records. Happy Again is their latest CD, as uh, Chris was telling you. Happy Again marks a new chapter for the group by featuring 11 all original songs penned by founding member Chris Trulson. Chris, your, your songs sort of um, hit me the way that uh, Loudon Wainwright uh, tunes hit me. It's like you, I've never found sadder songs funnier. <laughs> nice. Um, Success. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, good Man, job. Well, that's a nice comparison. I appreciate that. <laughs> Loudon is awesome. Oh, yeah, he is awesome. Yeah, I, I, was, I just realized I hadn't checked in on him for a long time, and he wrote this, this memoir. And uh, he, he said that the, um, the subtitle of it was On Parents and Children, um, X's and excess, death and decay, and a few of my other favorite things. Hey, yeah, we, I, <laughs> I can relate with that dude. That's good. Yeah. So it sounds like, it sounds like your life became a little chaotic, relatively void of joy, and you decided that naming some of your chaos in your songs was a way to, to sort of get over that hump. Yeah. Is that what happened? I mean, we all have ups, we all have downs, and, Indeed. uh, Songwriting is an amazing, cathartic thing to do. I I'm, I'm feel amazingly grateful that I can uh, get my thoughts at, down on paper and turn them into something other than like terrible, dark cloud thoughts. 
It's a, it's a wonderful uh, gift. And I, th with, with this record in, in particular, I was going through a lot of, a lot of hardships at the time. Uh, it made touring hard, it made mu pl music uh, hard and, and difficult to, it was a big struggle. But like I found um, as I was kind of working through some of the stuff I was going through, this creative outpouring of, of energy and music. And as I was doing that, uh, things sort of brightened up and, and was really happy to get it out of my system. And I think I did it, hopefully, I, I did it in a way that people can relate with, um, but also find joy in, in some of that darkness and, some, and kind of poking fun at it. Because, I mean, life doesn't have to be that serious. And I, I, have a pro I have a tendency to think that it's way too serious all the time. Um, so I think sometimes my songwriting combats that a little bit. So uh, who helped you put this record together? Well, it, yeah, it's uh, it's funny you mentioned Loudon um, because Teddy Thompson is the fella who who produced the record. He's got a lot of ties with with the with with the Wayne. Well, his and dad, right? Yeah, his dad, and, right? And 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 Richard Thompson, right? Um, so so Teddy helped us with the production of the record and really helped us to hone in on kind of some of the new directions that we were going in as a band. We've been, you know, we started out with the foundation of, of string band music, and that's, that's really what we, lo what we love and where we started as a band. But we've been trying to venture out into new directions to sort of uh, carry on traditions and, and sort of morph and shape traditions a little bit. And so he helped us with harnessing kind of some of those like 60s pop vibes and stuff. And a lot mm. of the backup vocals that we do uh, that Kalia and I arrange, it really... Uh, have that sort of feel to them a little bit. And so he, he really helped us with this idea of how do we make it sound kind of an homage to that, but uniquely our own. Um, so that was like the most in-depth studio time we'd ever had as a band. And uh, I, I was, it, it was a really uh, amazing experience to work with him on it. Yeah, and, and so his style, uh, d does, he, does he let you do uh, a lot of retakes? Does, does he like that? Well, well he, he actually... Um, <laughs> We we like to do a lot of retakes and uh -huh. like we're we're just like so picky and often uh, to a fault. And with this record, we ended up taking the first or the second take of pretty pretty much every song on the record, um, which without his uh, sage advice, we probably wouldn't have done. And I I think it just really offered some life to it that otherwise wouldn't have been there. Totally. Kalia, I was just gonna add that. Uh, yes, we are picky players for sure, and I think because we know that about ourselves, historically all of the other recordings we've ever done have been done live with no retakes, with no overdubbing. With, so this was our first time as a band to be able to be in the studio and to have creative control uh, to edit things in that yeah. way. Uh, so I think it was empowering, but ultimately we discovered we're actually kind of at our best when we're <laughs> loosest and when we just go in and do what comes naturally to us right out of the gate. Yeah, and, and did Teddy help you guys uh, feel loose in there? Yes, and he was really good at helping us hear that, like hear what he was hearing. Just like, you know, you, you're welcome to go back in and do it again, but you're really not going to get the same energy. Like, huh. And over the course of our time there, it, it became a bit of a running joke uh, where we knew it would end up being the first or second take every time, but we would keep trying anyway, e uh, every time. Yeah. I, I listened to Matt Damon talking with Terry Gross the other day, and and um, he was saying, uh, I think Terry asked him, well, do you like to do retakes? And he said, oh, yeah, as many as possible. And um, he said, but except I just worked with Clint Eastwood. And uh, Clint Eastwood doesn't, doesn't do the retake very much. He doesn't, he doesn't like that. He said, so I went up to him and I said, hey, um, Clint, do you mind if I do a retake? And Clint looked at him and said, well, sure, you can do a retake if you want to waste my time and everybody else's. <laughs> 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 yeah, great. that's uh, wise words. I, I think uh, we've, we've realized like if we can actually get through a tune, we practice a lot. And if we're in a studio and we can get through it and actually remember the words, and the, the simple things, then chances are it's probably going to be pretty good. Huh. How about the vocal arranging? How does that, how does that play out? Uh, Kalia, I, I somewhere got the impression that you like to have your hands heavy in the vocal arrangements. Yeah, I Is that think right? it's... Uh, 
kind of my greatest joy in working with this band, I think, is all the vocal work that we do. And that's a big part of how this band came to exist in the first place, as we were just really relishing the feeling of singing in three-part harmony and wanted to give ourselves more room to explore that, especially as it applied to kind of the early world of country music. So yeah, I love having my, my hands <laughs> in that uh, part of the process. And I think, um, we all definitely have ideas and have continued to explore over the years about what sounds to use and ways to use our voices and how to, like Chris was saying, remain like in paying homage to that early world of country and early American pop music while exploring some of the more playful and punchy vocal styles that come from especially the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, I, re I really like what's said on the website, which is that uh, it says Bill and the Bells have always been interested in exploring the sounds between rural and urban music, between vaudeville and down home roots. Do you, do you like like the nasty of the city and the sort of quaint and campy of the rural and seeing how those bounce off of each other? Exactly. Is that sort of what this is about? Totally, yeah. and that's remained true, I think, throughout this band's history and is still true very much. And, but it's interesting because that same description could apply to our earliest material as well, um, which was very much rooted in, like you said, kind of the pre-war repertoire, early pop music. But at that time, I think we were especially invested in this idea of reminding people just how diverse country music used to be in sounds. Uh, you know, it used to encapsulate all of those sounds because record companies back in the day, right, who were trying to sell records were capturing sounds of the South. But all of, uh, all of this repertoire from the cities was making its way into the mountains and the music of the mountains was making its way into the cities and all across the nation. So it was this just churning, exciting time in music history. So originally, uh, originally we were really taking a stab at capturing that idea and I think we've just carried that idea of the, the mixing and the churning and the exploration uh, up to what we're doing now which is almost entirely original music. You speak about this as someone who really truly loves it and teaches it. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, really, you really love your teaching work at uh, ETSU. I do, yeah. yeah. I feel really lucky. I'm a lecturer of old time music in a program there that's devoted to bluegrass old time and, and roots music studies, which is, mm. I mean, that job doesn't exist anywhere else. So <laughs> I'm very grateful to get to teach what I'm excited about. Um, and it's a pretty exciting time for that program right now too. We have a bunch of new curriculum that we just unleashed mm, that I'm fun. very proud of. And uh, we're just getting this academic year kicked off and um, yeah, sort of stepping into new territory. All right, very cool. Um, hey, I, why don't you, uh, I, I thought it might be fun, I, I, before I forgot, could you tell us how it is that you arrived at this name, um, that the band name given that, um, Chris, your name isn't Bill, and yeah. I don't know any women who like to be called Bells. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, I, it, the, the name sort of happened uh, kind of on a whim, where we, we, you know, listening to all these old records and listening to a lot of uh, obscure cuts from the 20s and stuff. Mm. We wanted to sort of uh, pay tribute to our, our region and like the Tri-Cities specifically where we live in East Tennessee. And there was this record that uh, was incorporated on the Harry Smith folk an anthology, which you might know, um, that really helped to set the folk revival going. But a Bill and Bell Reed record, uh, uh, the, the Old Lady and the Devil which is just like a pretty great old classic song. And they were from Johnson City. So we thought uh, Bill and cool. the Bells. It's a nice play on kind of the old weird America that people used to talk about uh, with the obscurity of kind of folk musicians of that time that actually recorded uh, just a few uh, commercial recordings. And many of them are amazing, amazing records. Yeah. So that's, that's where that came from. And now I answer to Bill. And uh, yeah, we all answer the bill. <laughs> Our heads will turn. Um, so yeah, we really dug a hole for, for that one, but that's all right. Well, it's great to have you with us. Uh, folks, welcome back Bill and the Bells on Red Barn Radio. Bus will ever make it 
How come it never seemed to run on time? I'm tired of this old city. I'm so tired, I'm losing my mind. As soon as he takes my ticket, Lord, I'm gonna leave it all behind. That'll be just fine by me. I mean, sweet mama, I'm gone. Yes, I'm traveling on. That'll be just fine by me. That'll be just fine by me. I mean, one thing's for sure, you never see me no more. That'll be just fine by me. record and uh, this next song is also off of our new record this is one of the one of the few songs on the record that is in fact uplifting and happy uh, well for real and we'll play it for you this is a, a song I wrote with with Disney in mind uh, with the, the idea of Disney picking this up at some point and getting me a big house somewhere on a hill uh, so I don't know like I love the tradition of, of some of those writers like Burl Ives and uh, Cliff Edwards and and you know he was the voice of Jiminy Cricket, uh, and some of those guys who who wrote kids songs back in the day that were just amazing songs that transcend much beyond like the idea of a children's song, um, but that's kind of the the idea of this. It's called Get Up and Give It One More Try. So like you to believe it's not worth chasing your dream though they may doubt you what they don't know about you yes you can do most Soon you'll be winning, start grinning, cause today your luck is beginning to turn, turn, turn around. Give it your all in, 
stop stalling. Just listen to your heart when it's calling. You'll be the talk of the town. You may fall every now and then, but you gotta pick yourself right up again. Lordy mama, you gotta kick and shout. I know you can do it, so get to it. No better time than now to prove it. Get up and give it one more try. try thanks everybody um, well you met you met uh, Kalia here on the fiddle over here playing the banjos this is Aiden Van Sutendale yeah. All right. yeah. Woo. she's gonna sing lead on this next tune this is one that we've been doing uh, for for quite some time I, I almost called the first song this because it's very close in title it's called the old lonesome blues Before we get on with more billing and belling, uh, next week, I got to tell you, we got something fun happening. Uh, we're going to get on with this 20th season of broadcasting and bring you Will Overman. He's a great singer-songwriter from Charlottesville, Virginia. 
been a lot of emails back and forth with him, and I'm so glad uh, we finally worked it out for him to come. His songs carry a maturity born out of the up and down of the life he's lived over the last 26 years. His 2021 release, The Winemaker's Daughter, uh, received rave reviews, and we're pleased as can be to dish up for you another heap and helping of Southern style with Will Overman. That's next week on Red Barn Radio. And now, let's, yeah, let's, that's Will Overman. All right. So uh, let's get back to tonight's Red Barn Radio program, however. We come to you live on our social media platforms, broadcasting from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the grand city of Lexington, Kentucky. And now please welcome back Bill and the Bells to the Red Barn stage. All right, Kalia's got a tickle in her throat. You gotta clear your throat. This is a demanding one, so we're gonna let her clear her throat for a minute. My water. I just finished my water. I always find another one. All right. <laughs> so, I swear I just inhaled stuff. Did you get a gnat in there? Right. It kind of feels like it. Um. Well, since Kalia just swallowed a fly, we're gonna sing the highest, hardest song for her. <laughs> the most um, exposed. Do you want? Do you want to change songs? Okay. All right. We're we're gonna play one. This is a. Uh, this is a tune called Wait For Me. This is, speaking of kind of like obscure old tunes, this is from a band called Harold and Hazel that we just stumbled upon and just love this song. And uh, we're gonna try to play it. Wait for me at the close of a long, long day when the night comes in view. I will to you in your arms all my worries will fade away at the close of a long long Called Wait for Me. Thank you. All right. We'll get a, another original tune here. This is one called uh, I'll Never Get Along with You, another feel good tune. <laughs> this was one of those songs that sort of came out of the flurry of, of songs that I was writing at the at the time. It, it was like I like I said, it was a, it was kind of 
as, as hard of the, the, as a time as it was, it was also a really gratifying time creatively. And uh, I've never written like a madman. I felt like the Tasmanian devil or something like, just like spinning around and songs were flying, flying out. Um, but this was one of them. And it goes like this, I'll never get along with you. <clears throat> Do you remember, sweetheart, the day that we met? The sun, it was shining, there you were smiling. Memory I won't soon forget You were my dream Oh, so it seems Now that I'm leaving I'd like for you to know Though I still love you and only think of you Life will go on, I suppose You were untrue And now we're through I'll never get along with you I don't believe a word you tell me You never do the things that you say you'll do Sweetheart, I'll still love you always Try to understand I just can't be your loving man I've done everything that I can do I'll never get along with you Can't you see my heart is breaking from the empty promises that you keep making. I'll never get along with you. I don't believe a word you tell me. You never do the things that you say you'll do. Sweetheart, I'll still love you always. Try to understand. I just can't be your loving man I've done everything that I can do I'll never get along with you that that's out of our system we'll play you a rip roaring fiddle tune here we've got Kalia Yegel here on the fiddle one of the best fiddlers I know of uh, we're so happy to not only be playing with her but just to know her and to have her in the band is incredible uh, you've already heard her playing and she's gonna rip into one here in a minute first give her another round of applause <laughs> What are you going to play, the good folks? Yeah, we're going to do a version of a tune called Hell Among the Yearlings, inspired by one of my favorite fiddlers, Mr. Clark Kessinger of West Virginia.
Cleaglon Hell Among the Yearlings, everybody. That was hot. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, so I'm with Bill and the Bells, Chris Trulson uh, on guitar and vocal, uh, Kalia Yegel playing fiddle. Just played that great tune. And also Aiden Van, Van Sudendale, who just did that banjo break, uh, that sort of scruggy and banjo break. And she's doing what banjo players do now, <laughs> which is tuning. Um, but uh, I would like to, to talk with, with her at some point. Um, <laughs> Hey, nice to have you here. Thanks a bunch for having us. Yeah. We're excited to be here. Yeah, well, you're the newest member. Yes, I am. Tell, tell us how you found these guys. Oh, gosh. Well, first I'll about? say it was a real joy to find this band in the middle of the pandemic. So it was through mutual friends and uh, I think also the wonderful invention of social media that uh -huh. we stumbled across each other. Um, yeah, and really just brought such a, a brightness to my life during that very boring period of, you know, not being able to do anything and being stuck inside the house. I got all this great new material to learn. Yeah, so, yeah. And so yeah. You, so you, you grew up in Florida, but you went to Denison. I did, and yeah. did you go to Denison because they have, you, you majored there in English, but did yeah. you, did you um, also go there because they have some traditional music there? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I moved to Ohio for the great weather. Um, but oh, <laughs> right. I moved to Ohio from Florida, which is backwards. Um, but yeah, Denison has a really great uh, bluegrass program uh, that started back in around 2000 and it's it's small but mighty there's some really great instructors Adam Schlenker a, a wonderful flat picker uh, guitar player uh, is kind of leading the program right now and giving all this great expertise to all the students and Ohio is a surprising hotbed of, of great bluegrass music huh yeah. yeah right right yeah and so would you have gone to that uh, to study English at Denison had they not also had a traditional music program? Yeah, I went to Denison really because of the bluegrass program. I actually mm. started out a pre-med chemistry major oh. and then decided that my labs were taking up too much of my banjo time. Uh -huh. And so the only thing I could major in uh, that late in my college career, I was like, okay, I took some English classes. I can scrape by with that and still have enough time to play banjo. So I minored in bluegrass and majored in English poetry. Okay, and yeah. then did you, um, you did you move then from Granville? Did, do you live in Nashville now? I do, and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what's going on down there? What are you, what are you doing down there oh, day to day? Well, lots, lots to do. I mean, not as much with, you know, things being a little quieter right now still, sure. but um, I love living in Nashville. Lots of great old time folks and bluegrass folks and people opening my eyes to even things outside of bluegrass and old time, which I never thought I would venture into. Oh, uh, really? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and do you have some other projects that you work on also down mm, there? Or? Not currently, no. I've actually spent the summer up at my family's farm in West Virginia, so I've been hermiting out there for a little while. Oh, all right. Yeah, Christmas right. tree farm. Ooh. So, uh, where in West Virginia? Pipestem, a little town called Pipestem in the very southern part of West Virginia. Okay. Yeah. All right. A wow. great state park is there for any listeners who are outdoor enthusiasts. Yes, called we, Pipe we love Stem that. State Park. Pipestem. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Good to know. Yeah, we all, we always like that travelogue stuff, Absolutely. and we're gonna yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks, Aiden. Of course. Um, yeah, and um, Kalia, um, I know you're always asked about Alaska because that's where you're from, and um, so I'll I'll try to ask you a decent question about <laughs> what it's like to grow up in Alaska. Um, I'm just wondering, like, can a grizzly bear really tear the the you know a door off your car? Tis the question, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, grizzly bears can probably do just about anything yeah, right. they set their mind sure. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're powerful creatures. <laughs> I will say it was so refreshing when I moved out of Alaska for the first time to realize that when you walk out a door, like, you don't have to look both ways to check for moose or bears. Like, that was uh. revolutionary to me. Like, I was just, I was just, that's just habit. It's just what you do. Um, oh, crazy. Yeah, so I'm still kind of relishing that feeling of not having major predators around all the time. Uh -huh. great. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you end up in Alaska? How did your family end up there? Yeah, I was born and raised there. Um, my dad also grew up there. Um, and my mom moved up there in her 20s, kind of the spirit of adventure and so, to get a uh, in job a city? on the slope. In Anchorage, Alaska. Okay, yeah. yeah, the big the big metropolis of Anchorage where like half of the state's population lives, I think. Huh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and but but you it was just adventure that g took your family took up there? My, um, I mean, I think a lot of folks at that time, right, were moving up to Alaska a little bit out of a, 
I think it was a lot of young folks that had the urge to adventure and be outside and just give it a go. And also, um, you know, industry, I think, was creating a lot of accessible jobs for young people um, at that time. Um, but yeah, it's my home place. It's where, yeah. where I grew up. Uh, yeah, my father still lives up there. Um, and I've been trying to figure out a way to get the band up there. It's bound to happen one of these days. I'm committed. Well, they have, some, they have an old time scene and an old time festival up in Anchorage? They do. There's a really thriving acoustic music scene in Alaska in general, actually. Like, it's what's it like? Like, give us some idea. Like, sure. I don't know any Alaska fiddlers. <laughs> yeah, have you heard of an artist named, uh, named Jewel? Uh, she's from Alaska. Oh, <laughs> um, no, her, there's a lot yeah. of other great musicians that come from Alaska. And I think part of what makes the scene there so special is that a lot of folks have moved there from elsewhere and they bring their music culture with them, right? Mm. So kind of the folk music scene is, is very multifaceted. And I took that for granted, uh, I think, growing up. It wasn't until I moved out of state that I realized how special that was, kind of like the moose and the bears around all the time. Um, but if you grew up playing oh. fiddle, you're going to learn some Irish tunes and some French Canadian tunes and yeah. some swing tunes and some bluegrass and some old time. And it's a it's a cool mix. Hmm. And you ended up then going to Vassar. Yeah, Is that right? that's where I went to college. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then after after Vassar, you ended up going down to ETSU to further study your instrument. Um, well, Kind of, yeah. Honestly, I, I was one of those people, I don't know about anybody else in this room, but I graduated college and didn't know what the heck I was going to do with my life. And they had just created uh -huh. a, a one-year graduate program at ETSU in Appalachian Studies. So that was kind of their first foray into that. And Chris and I met, we were both part of the first, the first class there um, in that graduate program. And it, it blossomed into a full master's degree, and I stuck around to, to finish that up. All right, and then they got you to come back. They sure did. To yeah. teach, and how long have you been teaching there? Yeah, this is my third year as a full-time faculty member, and I was an adjunct there, I think, for a few years before that. And wh what are some courses that you teach? Oh, I love that question. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, apart from teaching lessons and student bands, um, I teach like history and culture classes related to old-time music, and then we have some fun ones, like right now we're teaching the first version of... Uh, the art of interpretation, which is such a juicy topic that I think any mm -hmm. musician likes to think about. And it's especially pertinent for old time musicians because that's kind of what it's all about, right? Is figuring out your relationship with this, these older sounds and, and figuring out what the relationship is between current artists who um, have made their careers about being old time musicians and what it means to sort of be interpreters of, of old music. Hmm. And so the people in your, in your classes, the students in your classes, are the vast majority of them are also players who are studying a particular instrument. Yeah, and yeah. And what an amazing thing for them to learn, to be learning those tunes while they're also learning the history associated with Absolutely. them. Absolutely, and to be doing so it great. in East Tennessee, which is such a just uh, historically rich region. Yeah, yeah. well that, that school's got a great, uh, a great history and uh, we've, we've had Lots of musicians here <laughs> yeah. on this program from ETSU. So. Totally, we're very, yeah. very proud of our. Not graduates. as good as you. <laughs> Not as amazing as you. Oh, um, that's right. Far from oh, true. Really? But oh, you're thank such you. a beautiful player. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, so uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, hey, Chris. Um, so I want I want to get back to uh, to Bristol because we we have to talk about the birthplace of country music uh, museum because that's your employer. It is right. Okay, because we is. yeah we were I mean we were on the when I talked with you on the phone the other day I said so what do you got going on and you're, you're like well I, I got a bunch of phone calls to make and I got some letters to do and I got a bunch of meetings and oh yeah so what are all the things galore. they have you doing up there you wouldn't you wouldn't imagine how many meetings you can have over country music but you can have a lot right. of meetings <laughs> um well I, I'm a program director for radio station okay. with, that's housed within the birthplace of country music it's a uh, I started the station um I started as an intern there when I was in grad school and that was before the museum had opened and we had all this beautiful uh, equipment that was donated to to the museum um, that was historic artifacts around regional radio <clears throat> and so we had the idea of getting all of those repurposed that, uh, so we could actually turn it into a small community radio station and um, which which flash forward six years later it's a uh, it's become kind of a staple in, in the area, and uh, it really is a community station. It's all uh, volunteer-driven. 
lots of uh, musicians have shows on on the station, and uh, it's I'm really proud of it. It's been it's been a huge huge undertaking, um, but it's it's really been effective in offering a platform and a voice to some of the great music that we have in the region, which. Mm. Prior to that, there really weren't that many outlets um, that were reaching kind of outside of the region. Uh, and with Radio Bristol, we've successfully done that, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so you've been there for six, seven, eight years? How so long? I think I'm coming in to uh, six years. Yeah, like right over, maybe almost seven. All right. Long I time. Well, we were down there, like I said. I can't wait yeah. to go back down there yeah. now and get a real yeah. So the tour. station is like yeah. you. If you're going through the museum, we we're kind of like hamsters in there, and you can see us working behind the wheel. And like it's a, it's actually uh, it's it's an interactive exhibit as well. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so back in the 40s and 50s, uh, that w C Y B radio uh, broadcast a program that helped grow careers of important people like Stanley Brothers and. Flat and Scruggs and Jim and Jesse, uh, could you tell folks about that program and, yeah. and what you have done to revive that? Sure. It's called Farm and Fun Time, and yeah, pretty much all the first generation bluegrass uh, kind of heavyweights started started on that show um, before before they went elsewhere. They started in Bristol, and that show uh, it's it it was it was a really big deal in the region from the 40s into the 60s. And um, when Radio Bristol kind of started to develop, the first show I wanted to do was to revive Farm and Fun Time and bring it back. So we did. We put kind of a new coat of wax on it and uh, now have sort of a contemporary version of that show where we not only have a bunch of musicians that come through and are on it, but also we highlight farmers of the region. Um, we highlight Appalachian culture as a whole through storytelling, through uh, heirloom recipes, all sorts of cool stuff. And so that show... Um, was that was the first launch program at Radio Bristol and six years later it's become a PBS television show and wow. this year we're shooting for national syndication with it um, so it's pretty cool we have a little theater there so we've got about 100 people who can come and see the show every month yeah yeah it's nice. a lot of fun wow that's, uh, that's yeah. great that's amazing yeah that's uh, that's very 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 cool and um, do you intend to uh, to grow the audience for that we were talking earlier about uh about you possibly stretching out finding a, a bigger venue yeah yep is that um, for the program we have we've got all sorts of plans to do that um some of these have to be top secret but oh. there's some <laughs> things that are happening um with with the show that are definitely going to expand the footprint and um so you know with with the, with in a hundred seat theater it makes it sort of hard to get um certain tiered acts that to to make it worthwhile for them to come in for various reasons um, but if we could get into a larger theater that could really help with that um, but we also love to to continue highlighting regional great acts as well so that's priority too I mean, we, we don't have any trouble getting top tier acts here and how many chairs we have yeah 15 chairs that's here, true so that's true that's true I need to, to take to I've, gotta, I've got a I've got a I got to pick your brain after this. <laughs> so Bill, Bill and the Bells are the house band for the program. We are. We, yeah. we do a bunch of jingles, and uh, we're there every every month, hanging out, hosting, and trying to not let things fall apart. Uh, it, so we do like a lot of jingles and and segments in between um, when artists are switching, and and we always play a few songs. I write a jingle or two every month for sponsors and for. Uh, storytellers and that sort of thing, uh, which cool. can really make me sweat um, because we'll sometimes finish a jingle like the night before and then have to perform it the next day, mm. which can be kind of intense. So, um, so would I put you on the spot to ask you to like to do one of those? Yeah, we'll, examples? Do, uh, one we'll of those do one. Sure. Could you do one of those? Cool. What should we do? Hot Dip dog? Hot dog? The hot dog one? No, hot dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, dogs not hot dogs, one? not corn dogs, but dip dogs. Okay, yeah. do the dip dog okay. one. So the dip dog song, as you see, everywhere we go, people demand it. Um, <laughs> so we'll play it. This is a song about uh, an establishment in Southwest Virginia, right off the Lee Highway, six generation owners of a place called Dip Dog. It's not a corn dog. Don't ever go there and call it a corn dog. They'll kick you to the curb. But go and order a dip dog. You'll love it. And tell them you heard this song and uh, tell them, that that they should give us free dip dogs for life. Yes, please. <laughs> Does it go to the six? No. Okay. Dip 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 dog. Dip 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 dog. 
Except for dip, 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 dog, dip, 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 dog, dip, 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 dog, dip, 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 dog. Hey, now a word of advice: if you're looking for a weenie lover's paradise, exit 39 off of Highway 11. When your order's up, you'll find yourself in weenie heaven. Dip, 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 dog, dip, 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 dog. So there you go. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> hey, folks, we got Bill and the Bells here on Red Barn Radio. So great to have you guys here. Uh, what a treat this has been for all of us. Hey, we feel the same way. We're so happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, well, I think you got a, you made a bunch of uh, Bristol fans. I think we're all going to want to come down there and see the show. We hope so. We hope so. Come and check us out. It's always the second Thursday of the month, and we would love to see you down there. And do we have to get tickets ahead of time? Yes, you yes. do. In fact, they sell out quite often. So as soon as they go on sale, you should hop on it. All right. Able to. Yeah. All right. Bill and the Bells. Yeah, I guess so. All right. I'm going to play one that I wrote. Uh, strip down and see what happens here. See if I can remember it. This is a, th I'm very proud of this chorus. This chorus has no words in it. Uh, instead, it just has moans and sobs, and that's why it's called Sob in the Blues, and it goes like this. Let's see. Let me do that once more. <laughs> well, I'm not one to weep, and I'm not one to moan, but ever since I got married, my whole life has gone and trying to figure out what it did to deserve such a fate and how one woman could be filled with so much hate. I've been heated, I've been beat it, I've been badly mistreated, I've been called so many things that should never be repeated, I've been croaked at and poked at, it's a wonder I'm still breathing, surprise it lasts three weeks before I set to leaving, now I'm sobbing the blues. for me it wasn't always so mean and rough I used to smile and laugh and think about happy stuff like sunshine and bunnies hitting the lottery and winning money and saying things like bye I'm going fishing honey but with those days gone I went to see my friend Bill he's been married about 20 years happily if you will I said Bill you've been married for quite a long time tell me man how do you maintain your peace of mind well he looked at me mean and then he looked at me cruel he said 20 straight years I've been sobbing the blues Kids, listen close. A word of advice before you step out the door to get yourself a loving wife. Think for a moment, maybe think twice, maybe get a background check. How about five? Dang, forgot the rest. <laughs> How about a background check? How about five? Well, that's all right. We can cut that one. <laughs> all right. Instead, we'll play one here. We'll do one. Uh, this is a, a whale song. But the moral of the story of that one was uh, think, you got to think real hard about uh, your decision making. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, but this song here, this is called Bye Bye Bill. It's a, it's a pale ale whale tale. And we wrote this uh, actually for a jingle. And it turned into a full grown song. We'll play it for you right now. Once knew a man named Barnacle Bill He was swimming in the ocean for a thrill But his plans got derailed The day he bumped into a big old whale The whale said, Bill, what you doing, 
man If I had arms like you I'd be back on land Drinking from aluminum cans I'd be a good time Be a drinking man Bye-bye jump into one last tune y'all it's been a pleasure being here at red barn radio we've been looking forward to this for a long time again a huge uh, happy 20th uh kickoff to uh what i know is going to be an amazing year uh y'all do so much for music around the region and we truly appreciate being a part of it um so we'll play one here this is a this is one that people been singing for a long long time it's called ain't gonna rain no more no more it ain't gonna rain no more well, the night was dark and dreary, and the air cold as sleep. Old man stood out in the field, had his shoes all full of feet.
Bill and the Bells. Well, there's so many people to thank for our program. First, uh, Bill and the Bells, our guest this evening. Thanks to WBKU, Red Barn Radio's premier radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. And uh, back to thanks. And, and you know what? Uh, we thank just about everybody there is to thank, except the most bestest of all, which is you. Uh, thank you for listening to our webcasts, our weekly national public radio broadcast, and for watching us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Remember, every like, comment, share, and subscribe helps bring Roots Music Southern Style to broadcasters near you. That seems like a good tune, potentially. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Wow. We could maybe we could work yeah, on that we'll for you. We play that one up. Um, those of you here in the central Kentucky area, I got to remember to tell you this. You got to be sure to check out Red Barn TV, our weekly program of music now on ABC 36, WTVQ every week. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program. We're on the web at redbarnradio.com. And now I wonder if everyone would like to hear another number from Bill and the Bells, because I would. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. I think, we, I think we can do that. You got something? Yeah, we got, we got <laughs> plenty. Let's see here. Um, we were discussing what could be a great encore tune. We had a few picked out here. We had uh, we, uh, some beautiful old waltzes, uh, some nice sentimental crooners. Um, but we decided to do a song called the Corn Shucking Song instead. And that's what we'll do. This is a song, yeah, this is a song that we wrote uh, that's about everybody's favorite pastime. That's corn shucking. It's not a song, it's an anthem. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll play it here. This is one, um, we, we, we wrote this tune for, for a dude who told us about his his story uh, 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 with corn shucking parties that he used to have back in North Carolina uh, when he was young, and I uh, said, that sounds filthy. I'm going to write a song about it, and I did, so we'll play it. Shuck, 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 baby, shuck all night. Corn shucking, daddy shucks his corn just right. Shuck, 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 till the ain't nothing left. Corn shucking, daddy shucks the best. He might be shuggin' in a barn, he could be shuggin' on the street he could be shuggin' on a mountain, he might be shuggin' on the beach he could be shuggin' anywhere, so be for one Corn shuckin' daddy loves to shuck corn Shuck, 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 baby, shuck all night Corn shuckin' daddy loves to shuck it right He's a shuck, 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 shuckin' corn is fun Shuckin' his corn till the shuckin's done diddly 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 Shuck all night Corn shuckin' daddy shucks his corn just right Shuck, shuck, shuck till the ain't nothing left Corn shuckin' daddy shucks the best He might be shuckin' in his hat He might be shuckin' in his boots He might be shuckin' in his underwear Could be shuckin' in a suit Could be shuckin' anywhere That corn shuckin' fool would be happy to shuck for you Shuck, 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 baby, shuck all night Corn shuckin' daddy loves to shuck it right He's a shuck, 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 shuckin' corn is fun Shucking his corn till the shucking's done. Diddly did it be done. Well, let me dum dum bow. Chuck, yeah. The corn sucking song. <laughs> Well, before we close uh, this evening, we want to dedicate uh, this first show of our new season to a dear friend who passed away this year, uh, an extraordinarily talented and most affable and dear man, Tom Brown, was the voice of the Red Barn Radio broadcast for 19 years. We know he's listening tonight, and we close this evening's program with a musical outro from superstar picker Eddie Pennington, and finally, with words from our dear departed friend, Tom Brown.
I'm the voice of Red Barn Radio, Tom Brown. Well, that's all, that's all for this show this week. You can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide as we stream live on the web on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America, and archived performances on Spotify, iTunes, and video on the Red Barn Radio YouTube channel. Be sure to check out our social media for updates to our upcoming schedules and more information on our program. And now from all of us here at Red Barn Radio to all of our friends worldwide, it is our hope that you have a great week. Keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night from Red Barn Radio. Bye.